G'day everyone, here we are with another video on the R600, back into it today. We've got a beautiful day out here and, and um, yeah, probably just another day or so before it rains again and brings all that undone. But anyway, I just wanted to quickly show you a couple of things on this truck uh, before I set the camera up in a more permanent position where I'm working on the other side. So, what I've done here is a little bit like I did on the B model. I've put a, um, I've just got an air pressure regulator that I've adapted just into the breather spot on the fuel tank, just a qu uh, quarter BSP thread. And um, if I can't get the fuel up over there, I'll just put a bit of air into that top fitting there and just regulate it with that piece there, obviously the handle. And um, like I did with the B model, just, just give it a couple of PSI just to pressurise up to the filters and up to the pump. So that, that's, that's the first thing. Um, yeah, just put a little bit of fuel into it. Three jerry cans here, it's about $200,000 worth at the moment. Um, yeah, so a little bit on that cool power box. I just did do a little bit of an explanation the other day, but air will come in through that air cleaner. Um, it's drawn in through that tip turbine fan there, through this cool box. <clears throat> and um, yeah, air just comes straight back out here, which cools air going in on the opposing faces of these fins um, into the engine. So yeah, I mean, not a bad idea, but, but very complicated really. You lose a bit of boost because it's got to drive that tip turbine fan. So once they went to the intercooler out the front of them, they're a lot better idea, a lot cleaner. Easier to work on, all those sorts of things that, that the mechanics appreciate. Um, I don't know, we'll have to look around this other side. <clears throat> Righty-o. A couple of new fuel filters. Um, always fill them up. Um, sometimes it's enough to to get it primed up. Sometimes you do need a bit of help um, pushing fuel through from the tank end, which is what that air pressure regulator is for. It's new hoses. Um, just trying to get a spot there where <clears throat> where you can see it all right. Um, yeah, a couple of new hoses there. Stopper cables back on. What I'm going to do. You probably won't be able to see it too well, <clears throat> but down in there behind that steering canister. So just, you see, I do apologise for the view here. It's a bit hard to get it to focus, but where that pump goes on, basically, it's just um, going to be timing, timing it through there. But yeah, probably what I'll do is just, um, just um, set you up back here. That way there's no, no problems with the, uh, you know, blocking the view or interfering or anything like that. <coughs> so yeah, at this point, it's right to, right to start bringing fuel up to it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Stopper cable was fitted, and um, yeah, like I say, a few new oil, uh, fuel hoses, oil hoses, water hoses. Um, I did just notice a little bit earlier that the hand primer itself is just leaking fuel, so I haven't actually seen that happen on these ones before. So, just got another one here that I'm going to put on to win. I don't think it's even got a washer on there, that might be half the problem. Do that. Oh yeah, there is one there. So they've got a really little spring in there, which is quite handy for, for um, coming out and making, a, making it difficult to put the primer in, I'll just show you. Yeah, so just a, just a little spring there, where are we looking? Um, and it goes around a mushroom shaped valve or a rivet shaped valve. So I'll just drop him in there, get it fairly well centred. It is slightly forgiving, so not too stressed.
we'll just see how that's going to go now. So, what we got at the moment <clears throat> for fuel in the filters. Um, a little bit extra fuel in the tank too. We shouldn't have lost too much between the filters and the tank on the other side. So I'm hoping that we may not need the, uh, the air pressure regulator on the other side that I just showed you. But anyway, we'll just see. So <clears throat> the one closest to the front on this one is where the fuel comes into the pump um, from the first filter. So I'm gonna crack the fitting on the back of it. Make him nice and loose. So we've got a bit of fuel problem there. Oh, now it's disappearing again. It is bringing a bit of air out of it. So we've got a good stream of fuel there now. So we'll lock him up. Right, so <clears throat> the next one we we'll probably want to lock up. Um, I mean, we can follow this back to back to the filter, but it should, um, yeah, because they're all new hoses, we might do that. So we'll follow him back um, to the to the filter again. which is down there and straight away we've got good fuel coming out of that so lock him back up put me head on the filter which is always quite handy <coughs> so your inlet to your pump is this front one here, it's already loose, so we'll just keep on bringing fuel through, which will go through the line, through the filter, and back up to here, and there we go. Got a bit of fuel there. Rodeo, so... First stage of that <clears throat> priming is complete. Now what I'm going to do is spill time it. So on this um, top of the fuel pump here, just remove the injector line on number one. Just undo the big delivery nut, uh, delivery valve holder nut, I should say, which is about an inch and a quarter on this one. Always get an itchy nose when your face, when your hands are full. Anyway. You need a bloody spanner. So just take your holder off to begin with, right? 
then inside that, you've got this piece here. Right? <clears throat> so, on a lot of them, this piece here will be sort of stuck into the first piece. They're, they're just a, a slip fit into there. And just over time, they get muck and stuff down them and they just stick together. Just keep that stuff to one side. Get a spring in there. And there's a delivery valve we're going to take out. Okay, <clears throat> now it's just a it's got a chamfered end on it which just seals and the spring holds pressure down on it and that helps to build your pressure and seal off the fuel chamber and that cylinder. So just for the purpose of spill timing, you want to take that delivery valve and spring out. So that'll leave you with those two pieces to put back in. Right? Because what we want to do here is um, just hook it back up, but just have it open to fuel so it won't build any pressure. So to do that, Just put this back as is without that and fit up a little a little cutoff line that I've made just to to better indicate the the way the fuel stops when the when the port closes. Well yeah, we're pretty clean there to go back on. Okay, so that's just sitting back in there um, with the fuel spout sticking out the top as per normal. The height doesn't change, nothing like that. So <clears throat> I've made up this tool here, um, which is just an old, old injector line. You know, rub, th rub through down here somewhere. So, so it was replaced. So all I've got is just that bend in it. So when it's hooked up, it brings the fuel line just down out where you can see it. And I've cut that off at a 45. That, and it just... You can see the little hole in the middle of the injector line. And um, yeah, it, it'll just show a little dribble out that pipe. Um, and that's what I use. Other people, excuse other people might use um, something different, but, that, but that's what I use and it generally gives a pretty good indication. So. Just wanna hook it up to where number one is. Just snug it up. Right, <clears throat> so bearing in mind that before we set it up to um, number six rocking, which was number one at top dead center, compression. Um, <clears throat> now where this is at the moment, this engine is probably about 
60 or 70 or thereabouts degrees before top dead centre. So because this has already got fuel prime up to here, we're going to get a we're going to get a little bit of fuel come out of this out of this pipe here. Right? So we've got a stream coming out of there. So that, that's the first part of what we're doing. <clears throat> okay. So that's that'll be that for the moment. Now on the front of this um, front cover, there's an inspection plate. I think I did show you in a previous video. Um, that's it. I've just taken it off and cleaned it up. Got a new gasket ready for it, just so I'm not waiting here for too long on the video. But that uncovers. Um, be a little bit hard to show you on this truck, but it just unco uncovers the front of the, the auxiliary drive. Um, and on the front of it, there are um, four, I think, three or four. Um, yeah, there's four, there's four bolts, right? And they go through to your fuel pump drive, right? And they're on slotted holes, right? So <clears throat> you've got, oh, it would probably be about, at a guess, 60 degrees of, of, I don't, it's not, I don't think it'd be a full 90 degrees, but it might be 60 degrees of movement in your pump timing, right? So that's, that's what I said the other day in the video about, about um, not getting too concerned if you're a little bit out on a mark or something initially when you first put this on, because you can undo those bolts at the front while this is all still hooked up, leave everything still intact and just spin it from the front. And you can either spin your engine over or spin your pump drive over with an inch and a quarter spanner. Um, yeah, so, so don't if, if you if you when you're fitting the pump up, if you if you're a little bit worried and you put them put the timing not the timing pointer but the the dowel pin or whatever it is the um, the special pin on the coupling towards the bottom to make your job easier. Yeah, don't be too stressed if you're a little bit out because right? there is only one way that you can that you can couple the pump to the engine on that coupling and then you can just you can spin the whole thing over like I say spin the pump separately or spin the engine separately with the front of it here <clears throat> so so what I'm going to do at the moment is just crack off these four bolts and um, and then what I'm going to do um, what will I do I'll, um, I'll move the engine to the right position and um, then we can just then once the engines on the right position I can just move the the front of the fuel pump back or forward slightly with the inch and a quarter spanner with the bolts loose um, and that will that will show on here once I've got fuel pumping and priming it'll show me on here exactly where to exactly where to stop it and then lock the bolts up. So they're just 916 socket or fit these they're just a 380 UNF thread So, four bolts loose at the front. You just want them <clears throat> loose enough by hand. Just so that there's no friction between those, between the um, drive gear and the front of the auxiliary drive shaft. <clears throat> so that'll just, that'll just move easily there now. Notice that my the marks a little bit off where I wanted on the on the harmonic balancer, so I'm just going to snug two of those bolts back up, and I'll just spin it back to where I want to start doing the checking on the engine. So those two engine, uh, those two bolts are tight there now. I'll just bring this, I'll bring this engine up to where I want it. So turning it over clockwise.
Right, that's about where I want him there. In a minute. So I've, I've just put that at 24 there. <clears throat> now, I'll just back these back off. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see that started, well, I don't know if you could see that or not, but, but um, as soon as I moved the front of the fuel pump backwards slightly, it started bringing fuel back up. So <clears throat> it was fairly close, where these marks on the engine were before was fairly close to the right timing. Um, so you can see a bit of a stream of fuel coming out there. And now it stops. And that's just with me moving the front of the fuel pump ever so slightly. So, so I'm just backwards of that position now, so fuel should come out of there. Now, while, while we've still got fuel coming out, I'll just move that forward to there. You can pump that primer and it doesn't come out, it's just forming a single drip there. So that's very close to port closing. <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. And I'm going to lock these front bolts up now. Um, Okay, so they're done up now. So, um, that's spill timed. So, like I said, <clears throat> quick run through that. The other day we ran through before we removed the pump and um, made sure that it was, that it was um, um, number six rocking and num number one uh, cylinder was a top dead centre compression, right? The reason you want to do that is because obviously um, two full rotations of the engine to make a complete cycle so we could have easily been on number six there and trying to spill time number six piston um, to number one on the pump so you just want to make sure that you're timing one to one that's the only reason for that um, yeah you don't want to be 180 degrees out otherwise you'll never get it to start so um, then what we've done um, loosened off the front I removed that front cover and I've, cl I've cleaned it up prior to the video. Um, loosened the four bolts at the front so that we can spin the, the drive coupling um, or, the, or the fuel pump, I should say, on the drive coupling. Um, removed the, the delivery valve and the spring from number one um, injector port and refitted this tool here. Um, there are other ways you can do it. You can you can. You can work the throttle and pump it through and watch the fuel level raise and lower in your in your, uh, in your port. Uh, a lot of people do it that way. Uh, this is just the way that I do it. I've just got used to doing it, so that's the way, um, that's the way I prefer. No right or wrong either way. Um, you're still pretty much getting the right result. So um, 
block the four bolts up at the front. And so what I'll do now, while my hands are still a little bit a little bit dirty, we'll um might just put this gasket back on the front. Um, and that'll and then what we can do after that is probably get it ready to start it. So like I say, I did clean this earlier on, I got all the old gasket material off and just use some emery cloth to clean it up. And also as a shade you'll clean the clean that little uh, inspection cover off. Just because it's a bit of a bugger to get to and <clears throat> I did try removing this bracket here but these hoses are pretty tight on the power steering and I just thought it wouldn't have given us a lot of uh, still, still wanted to sit there, so on that pair of steering canister bracket. So anyway, it's not the end of the world. So yeah, we're sort of probably going okay on our run through of things. Um, if we get time in this video, I might just set the valve clearances it doesn't take too long on these things I just you know I don't have the actually don't have the right um, glue to to put new lid gaskets on so I don't know if I'll do that today or if I'll do that perhaps tomorrow in another video once I've got some some of the right glue um, we might take it for a bit of a road test tomorrow after we do that but anyway we're getting a bit ahead of myself we'll get started first just wiping these little bolts down that go in the front of them in front of this um, Front cover inspection plate. Like I say, there are a few challenges on these things from time to time. Um, this has got the power assist steering uh, with your garrison help around, or garrison style help around there. Um, some of them uh, with that setup also used a belt driven power steering pump which was up above uh, where you've got to do that work which just makes it a bit, um, a little bit more tricky. And yeah, with a with an air conditioner on there, you'll um that's where you'll have your bracket and compressor, so it gives you even less room. But but yes, yeah, it's not too bad anyway. I always just put a little bit of. A little bit of sealing on where I can. Not too much, just in case you've got to get the gasket off again one day, but uh, just a little smear, just to, all this stuff's fairly old now, and and um, there's always a couple of nicks and grooves in the, in the surfaces that you want to try and seal, you know, whether they've been from a screwdriver or a scraper or a hammer over the time. I just find the blue or the grey um, RTV, the Loctite brand or Permatex brand, they're all pretty much the same. Just a little bit, you don't want it too much spewing out of it, but like I say, it's quite often I use it to. Um, Even on non-oil type surfaces, where you're just looking for, or you know, non-critical type sur surfaces, I should say, just where you're looking for good contact. And um, if you've got an even film of this stuff around it, it doesn't have to be quarter of an inch thick or anything silly like that. But if you've just got a thin, even film, you'll be able to be able to tell when you pull the bolts down if your surfaces are going together evenly. Um, yeah, so. But on this, I just put a little bit on there. Oh yeah, I just want to check something here. I'm not quite sure if these holes are blind holes or not.
Yeah, okay, so there's oil all the way up the threads, which gave me a little bit of a suspicion, and yeah, those holes in the front cover go right the way through to uh, the timing casing behind it. So we'll just put a little bit of sealant on all of those bolts as well. It's not a high pressure area, but anything you can do to stop an oil leak's a good thing. It's good when you drop a bolt with elastic on it. Really gets in, <coughs> covers those threads nicely. Always very, very appreciative when that happens. There we go, we'll try again. Now, if you're, um, if you're doing a job like this yourself, and for argument's sake, you just, you just want to <clears throat> take the pump off, there might be an oil leak on the front gasket, or, the, or there might be a, you know, just an issue with that puff limiter piston there. You don't have to do a spill time on it. Um, just setting it up on your, on your degree mark, and um, we'll... Yeah, it'll be it'll be right. If nothing really moves inside, uh, the front coupler inside inside that housing, which is which is on the front of the pump, it's got a keyway in it, so it can only go one way. Um, yeah, so you you don't have to spill time. I, I just put a different pump on this one, and um, yeah, I don't know where it was set up to before. Don't know much engine history at all. So I, I'm just starting from scratch that way. That's all. Yeah, so don't don't think that you have to do this on every every time. Um, yeah, for, for whatever reason, <clears throat> if, you, if you don't need to be too critical with the timing, um, yeah, don't feel as though you've got, to, you've got to do this spill time process.
You don't want to go too, <coughs> too berserk with those. Um, yeah, they are. <coughs> pardon me, they're only a, only a 5 16th U and F bolt, so yeah, you don't need 200 foot pound hanging off them. Okay, so it's sealed up there. Put all, all our fuel lines sealed up. So what we'll do now is remove this, is remove this um, uh, to spill timing pipe, for want of a better word. Okay, we've got our delivery valve, we'll just give it a wipe up, make sure it's nice and clean, particularly on the chamfer of it, you just want it nice and clean, you put it in chamfer end first, pointy end first. We we'll do the same thing with the spring, make sure it's nice and clean. Yeah, so got him nice and snugged up there, nice and tight. Get this injector line started again. So at the moment, I've um, just got all of these loose. <clears throat> what I'll do shortly. I'll wind the thing over and get fuel out of the top of them. Get them all loose. So yeah, we'll make sure we've got good, um, <clears throat> good fuel pressure there. Right, so the inlet's done up there. So a little bit of fuel come out of that return, so we know that that's doing its job. So 
So it means we're basically building up pressure in the body of this pump here. All our lines by this stage will be tight. So our two inlets, oh sorry, inlet and outlet on your lift pump, your main inlet to the pump, and just your return. Um, it's on this style of filter, they run up. One of the returns from this cluster of returns back to the top of the filter. Um, yeah, so it's the early style green filter, which, um, yeah, they're all black now, which is a really handy thing that Mac's done, but yeah, it used to be, um, for a long time anyway, uh, certainly all of my uh, mechanic, mechanical time the last 20 years, there's been, you know, basically <clears throat> a couple of types of red filters, or, yeah, but really only one for these old old trucks, like the old six cylinders up to four valve, um, early and late model V8s, um, but they use two different types of green filters, and um, one will be a little bit shorter than the other, and they've got a little bit of a different size thread on them. Um, with the old style, they normally run a thread uh, fitting to the top from the return and then you've got this other one here which is which is um, your return from your injector lines yep, so we've got good pressure on there whole system pressurised so obviously from other videos you might remember that you obviously got to <coughs> crank the thing over to get fuel out the top of it. Um, so probably not in this video just because I don't have the lid gaskets here I'm just going to tighten the bolts back down that are on the that are on the um, rocker cover and um, just just so we can get this thing started and see what it wants to do. We probably need a little bit of water too which is something that I hadn't really anticipated. Um, but anyway, let's see if I can find a watering can floating around somewhere. Um, yeah, probably from this view, I just <clears throat> I don't think it'll be much benefit to anyone for me to be setting the valves from here. I might try and set the might do it in, in the next video of, of just trying to set the camera up where you can actually see the rockers um, a little bit better. So today I'll just lock that down and concentrate on just getting it running. Um, I've got all the gaskets there for the for the rocker covers and the breather crossover and everything, but I just don't have the right glue. I always like to use a Loctite 406 on it. Uh, yeah, it just seems to seems to do the job well. So just so it doesn't piss oil everywhere, I'll I'll just um, bolt it back down. The front one hasn't moved, obviously, but I really don't know why I didn't use the battery operated ratchet for this, but anyway. Old habits die hard, I suppose. Right, just the breather tube on these, half inch.
Okay. Well, <clears throat> looks like we're nearly ready now just to um, put a bit of water in it and then we'll put a, get a bit of air up and wind it over and see if we can start it. Right, remember where I put a watering can. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so that's the, that's where we're working today. All the creature comforts here. Be sure where I put that watering can. Beautiful day up here today. Absolutely magnificent. Birds are singing. All we've got to do is get this bloody truck started. Don't know if we're going to find it over here either, just quietly. No, not where I thought it was. No, well. Sorry if that camera's in the sun a little bit there. <clears throat> thought if I stopped it and come back to it, that it'd probably bugger up the whole video on you so we'll keep it going just for a little bit mm, not having a lot of success here to be honest <sighs> oh, I might just have to grab a um, bloody 20 litre drum or something bugger it Got a little bit of stuff around here, <clears throat> quite a bit of mess. Sometimes it's um, it's pretty handy having a bit of stuff around. Other times it's not really all that great. Um, to show you on the front of one of these engines here, maybe the t pump timing cover, but I don't think we're going to have any engines here that are no. One container here, not the one I was looking for. Now, well, I won't have to run with this one. Yeah, it'll do for today. Um, <clears throat> I'm enjoying all your comments, uh, enjoying the feedback. Um, yeah, please keep them coming. Um, it helps me do a better job and there's things that I do or don't do that, that um, 
you know, they um, that are going to, you know, that need to be brought to my attention. Um, so yeah, I, I do appreciate the comments coming through. Um, God, this is a bloody freshwater container. It might take two years to freaking piss this off and just. Use it as a jerry can for today. Oh, it's handy that just comes off by the look of it. No, it doesn't do that either. Yeah. <clears throat> Get a little bit here, then put a little bit more in. See how much of a mess we can make. That's generally a pretty good, pretty good skill of mine. Well, yeah, bear with me a moment, I'll just go and fill this bugger up. If it doesn't break on the way back, I'd be pretty impressed. Now we've got a bit of a hole in the bucket here, dear Liza, so... I'll make a fair old mess, but... Well, yeah, I might just grab one of those, one more of those, and put it in. <clears throat> um, tomorrow, when I do the other bit of work to it, I'll probably change the oil, change the water, and I might, you know, just I've got a new coolant filter there for it. I'll put a little bit of coolant in it. Won't make it too strong, so but I'll just put a little bit more in today for good measure. I think.
I'll probably get covered in water here. I think this split's opened up a bit. I'm not even sure how big this thing is, but probably five or six litre or something like that. <clears throat> anyway, that'll do us for now. Wasn't quite empty before, but I only just dropped it out so I could do that compressor hose. So. Um, yeah, just about what I would have put into it there. So yeah, <clears throat> I suppose now we're going to have to get ready for a bit of noise either way because uh, we're going to get the compressor fired up. Um, yeah, so um, uh, this will probably be the last of this video with with you know sort of clear sound, I guess. Um, we'll see how we go once the thing gets running. I might be able to um, hook the hook the earphones up, but it's a little bit hard to do that while the, um, while we're trying to film in one spot. So. Um, We'll run this hose out. Um, everything's pretty right here to to um, get it to fire up. So we'll get this hose out. Um, get some air coming into it. On this gadget, there's a um, uh, that style of fitting on the air start tank. So uh, just male, uh, use a male um, trailer coupling. That's what we use most of here in Australia. Anyway, I'm not sure about you guys in the US, but um, yeah. So just a male and a female makes it pretty easy. That'll just fit my Nitto compressor with the tap in the middle. Um, prepared for a bit of noise and a bit of shaking around we'll see how this camera goes because I've just got it precariously positioned um, on a piece of rubber on my toolboxes here um, and it's really good while there's no shaking or drumming from the compressor but anyway this will be a nice experiment
that's pretty handy. The compressor's run out of petrol. Um, as you can see, I'm fairly well prepared in this video today. No water on hand. Um, I do have petrol on hand. Anyway, I'm just going to get these um, earphones unwound for you and just see if we can... Um, I might just cut some of, the sound, some of the sound down if I just go through these. So you, won't, you might not hear all the noise. Um, I think I might do a, another video tomorrow just on how to unwind the cord on these bloody earphones. I swear they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that well if you, if you wanted to wrap them up. Anyway, bear with me a minute. I'll put some fuel in this thing. Put the bloody bottle. So hopefully that's um, got some of the sand down for you. Um, yeah, so I'll just leave these leave these connected. I'll just leave them over here so that you're not getting all the full noise. Then when I come back out and try to talk to you, um, yeah, we'll just sit these back on and try and give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing. So anyway, we'll let this thing build up air and. Um, uh, give it a spin over. Um, we should we should get fuel out of those uh, six ports on top of the injector. So I'll line them up, uh, lock them up, tighten them, and then it should go. Uh, that's a theory anyway. So yeah, bearing in mind what we've done, same as the uh, the B model video, same as the F600 video. We've got, um, we've got pressure there on the hand primer pump. Um, we've timed it to where we want to time it. The stopper cable um, is done up on this one and uh, because the pump's been done up a bit, it's nice and free. Um, uh, we've got a bit of water in it. We'll check the oil, it's okay. So, yeah. What I'll, um, what I'll do once yeah, once it cuts out here, I'll just put these microphones down, or earplugs down, I should say, and um, give it a spin over on the key, on the button, um, then let it build back up. I'll um, check to see which ones have got fuel coming out of them, and uh, yeah, by then we should be getting fairly close. Hopefully the air compressor experience is not too drastic for you there, all listening in.
like I say, um, I'm still learning here and um, experimenting with different types of um, different types of you know, um, earphones and microphones and camera position and stands and all that sort of stuff. So at the moment, we'll um, we'll run with this and hopefully it might improve it and get some of the background noise out of it for you. But uh, these Airstar tanks are pretty big; they take a fair bit of filling. So we'll. Um, should cut out here in a moment. We'll give it a spin over and see what happens. Mm. Rightio, so that's um that's built up. I'll just put these down and I'll jump up in the cab and spin her over.